Inside the last half an hour of the Sports Mag Zone for this Tuesday, renowned track and field analyst Hubert Lawrence and communications specialist Michael Grant have collaborated yet again. The duo have combined to produce 50 Days of Fire, a research project chronicling the 50 greatest performances by Jamaican sprinters on the international stage. The pair previously worked on Champs 100, a history of that of the Jamaican high school athletics, as well as the power and the glory, Jamaica in world athletics from World War II to the Diamond League era, 50 Days of Fire, which has been endorsed by the Jamaica Olympic Association and the Sports Development Foundation, also offers readers excerpts from a 1908 interview with a young G.C. Foster, one of Jamaica's pioneering figures in sport. Joining me in studio to speak about the project are Hubert Lawrence and Michael Grant. Gentlemen, Welcome to the Sports Max Zone. Great to have you on, Michael. I guess your first visit here. Uh, Hubert has been here many, right. many times before. Let me congratulate you, first of all, on the brilliant publications you had previously, uh, which I just spoke of. But this one, I get the feeling, uh, has, some, has something special for, for its readers. Hubert, may I, may I start with you? How satisfying was this product? It's um, great to put the pen back into the ink. It's... Um a fascinating experience to come back to writing books, not short articles. Second of all, um, track and field is a big part of Brand Jamaica, and track and field, though we're good at the, the field events and the throws and the jump, sprinting is a big part. Speed is a big part of Brand Jamaica track and field. And so this book captures that speed, that urgency we all have about moving fast and enjoying things that go quickly. Um, that's why it's fire, that's why it's lit. Yeah, um, Michael, this has been a project about a year in the making. Through my world travels, I constantly get bombarded with questions, why is Jamaica so strong in track and field? A publication like this, which I gather is just under 30 US dollars right. in, in price, um, 4,500 Jamaican, will furnish interested parties with a lot of information about the history and the genesis of uh, Jamaica's prowess in sprinting. Right. Well, this book is now um, the third part in the trilogy. And so the first two were meant to settle bets. So it was the kind of thing that people could, if you're in a bar, sports club, wherever, be able to fully understand what happened, when, who did what, what were the times, what were the performances. This one now goes deeper in talking about the cultural significance of the 50 events that we chose. Mm. Are there any of the 50 events that you would have chosen that would surprise the now generation? Because you know typically uh, a generation tends to be a little ignorant of right. things that may have happened 50 or 60 years before that um, without you know, letting on too much of, of what is in the book itself. Is there any particular performance in the 50 that you would want to highlight that maybe the average viewer may not have been thinking of? Well, in addition to the things that happened pretty recently, like Brianna Williams beating um, grown women as a 16-year-old to win the under-20s, yeah. the one that I come to most of the time is Marilyn Newfield, yeah. who at 17 broke the world 400-meter record. Yes. And then shortly after that broke the world indoor 400 meter record. She was only 17. And she was British after she left Jamaica as a kid, was competing for Jamaica, for Britain. Britain. Yes. And then decided almost at the last minute before the 1970 Commonwealth Games that she would represent Jamaica. She wanted to. And there was a whole international um, blow up over it because there was a meet that was waiting on her and she decided she would wear black, green and gold. And that's where she broke the world record. So that's the, 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 the ins and outs of what happened behind the scenes. It's yes. almost like a spy novel, that yes. part, um, is something that a lot of people are not that clear on and should really enjoy reading about. Yeah, interesting. And Hubert, I recognize that every chapter of this publication actually has thoughts and comments from the individuals featured. And um, that Marlene Newfield story, I guess, would be an eye-opener for a lot of people as well. We wanted to bring these big moments alive. It's not just a footnote in history. It's real Jamaicans battling the world under real conditions back then. And that broad point, Lance and Michael, this is before the internet. Yes. So we don't have a sense, for example, in 
2022 and how big Donald Quarry was in 1976. Um, World Beaters in Meters, a big poster. DQ posed like this, sideburns neat, hair neat. He was the world beater. He had just won the Olympic Games, had world records, and so he was the bolt of that era. And that is not carried in the history that we read today. So 50 Days of Fire takes those 50 events, in our opinion, obviously, and tries to bring it into the 21st century, giving each person the size and body of their achievements that it deserves. Yeah, and as you say that, Hubert and Michael, 1976 was a big year for Caribbean athletics because with Hazel Crawford winning the 100, Quarry winning the 200, Alberto Juan Torino, the four and the eight, Caribbean athletes won gold medals in all of those events in Montreal, right? It was big. And of course, in the 100, one, two, and then Quarry wins the 200. So you're absolutely in charge of all the speed. Yeah. Outside of the performers that would be highlighted in this publication, Michael and Hubert, I recognize as well that not only we'll be hearing from the athletes and the performers, but their coaches and some of their rivals are also being highlighted in a lot of these stories. Right. It's almost like creating a kind of a soap opera around the event. In my interview with Steve Williams, one of the legends of American sprinting, he a said... Quarry, a quarry contemporary. Exactly. Yeah. A big one, contemporary of quarries. But they're also very good friends, which people didn't really realize at the time. It wasn't to their benefit. <laughs> like, like Ali and, um, Fraser. and Fraser, which is what the book says. Um, it, it, it's the kind of thing where you get to see the surrounding atmosphere around the event. Steve Williams said that everything is so quick. There's no point even describing races or how I felt or whatever. It's really everything that surrounds it. So this book will give that type of, um, that type of view. Of, of insight. Insight, yeah. Yeah. I, I want to also mention that, obviously, Usain Bolt, Elaine Thompson, Shelley, and Fraser Price will be big in this, in this story. But the embryonic phase of Jamaica's rise to world prominence in track and field will also be captured because this generation has to recognize that it started before the Bolts and the Fraser Prices and uh, Thompson Heroes of this world, Hubert. The book travels chronologically and the 50 are drawn out of all the eras of time to know. And so the reader the athlete, the young fan, the veteran fan will be able to look through and see in each generation who were the people who came up, put on that black, green and gold and did the business for this country. And so it does give them a way to travel through the history, seeing these high spots through time. And I think that's, and it's in one, it's in one volume. You can just pick up and read at your leisure. Yeah, I, I see too that many of the photos and uh, interviews coming out in this publication would have never before been seen by, by a public audience, which by itself should make this publication, 50 Days of Fire, Michael, very attractive. It should. Um, it begins with G.C. Foster in 1908. That adventure, he went on to the Olympics, sailing to Britain on his own with his own money intending to make it into the games, almost making it, because um, he was listed in the British trials. Yeah, 1908, yeah. The first London Games. Mm -hmm. Didn't get to run in the actual Olympics. But he was so prominent, the coach who helped him come over helped him to get into meets all over Britain and um, that part of the world. And he was able to beat lots of the people who were actually Olympic competitors. Yeah. G.C. Foster, Hubert, what does that name mean for you? Of course, the physical, physical education university or college named after him in St. Catherine, um, colossal in its impact on Jamaican sport, but the name G.C. Foster, um, on a, on a personal, little, little known by a on, lot of on, current Jamaicans. On a personal Jamaicans. level, Lance, my yeah. dad's house is half quarter mile away from the building. I saw it come out of the ground um, in Angels. Um, we know him as a name on the sign at Angels. That's right. But now we know him, again, as the coach. That's late in his life. But in the book, we know him as a sprinter. We know him as that, that genesis for the big sprint program for Jamaica. He is the first guy who is world level, Norman Manley fast in high school, Jamaica College, 1911. But we know now G.C. Foss is the first person who says, listen, 
I'm going to take these people on. I'm going to go and try and make the Olympic Games. Remember, there's no JOA. There's no J3As. But this man felt, like many Jamaicans, that he could go somewhere else, put his marker down, and make his name. Mm. It's a big deal. The official launch comes up Thursday at the GC Foster College, along with a film, a, a documentary, a half an hour documentary, I gather, that will be shown there. And Dion Hemmings is going to be featured on, on, on that um, launch. Right. The sponsors, Anybet, the title sponsor, decided to honor a great Jamaican um, athlete and decided to choose the first female Olympic gold medalist. And they chose Dion Hemmings. She very graciously decided to be here for yeah. that, and she'll be there to receive the, yeah. the award. Yeah, I, I think a little bit undersold Hubert, as far as I'm concerned, Dion Hemmings. Uh, Michael just mentioned first Olympic woman to win gold uh, for Jamaica, but for also for the English-speaking Caribbean, which right. extends her achievement beyond just a local, a local platform. Very modest. Um, when you think of those who tried before her, Great Merlinati, Juliet Cuthbert, Grace Jackson, tremendous before them, Una Morris. But for someone to come through and do it, get the gold and open those gates. After her, Veronica Campbell, Melaine Walker, Shelen Fraser, Elaine Thompson, World Champs, Bridget Foster Hilton, Williams. But she was the first. She pushed the door open and said, Jamaican women can do this. So, mm. um, and she's quiet. Over time, Jamaica's honored her more and more, and on Thursday, more and more again, because well-deserved. Yeah, and we have to remember that her 1996 Atlanta win in the 400 hurdles um, shrugged off the challenge of two outstanding Americans, Kim right. Batten and Tonya Buford, in Atlanta, with the entire you know, stadium cheering for the Americans. And uh, they, they sandwiched her, didn't her? She was in one of the middle lanes. Split B them. Buford was on her outside or batten on her inside or the other way around. But I just know that the two of them were coming at her and, yeah. and couldn't beat her. So um, I think uh, this launch on Thursday should be a very satisfying experience for all track and field fans. I must say this uh, book, if you hold it up, Michael, so a camera uh, person, very attractive looking book as well. And I'm pretty certain that the contents will be very satisfying for the readers because there is this dire need to ensure that the history of Jamaica's track and field is well documented. And uh, there are a lot of questions asked about the prowess of Jamaican sprinters that I think on reading this publication, it will, things will become a lot clearer to, to uh, many so. of, of, the, of the readers, Michael and, and Hubert. I'm pretty sure you'd, you'd agree with that. Absolutely. Yeah, I do too. I think so. Mm. All right, well, gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us here on the Sportsmax Zone. Uh, 50 Days of a, fi of a Fire, and uh, that is the new publication by uh, Michael and Hubert. will be officially launched on Thursday, and uh, this publication is at a cost of 4,500 Jamaican dollars, I think 29.95 US, and uh, we are global here on the Sportsmax Zone, so wherever you are in the world watching the Sportsmax Zone now, just... Uh, make sure that you get your hands on this publication. Hubert and Mike, thanks for being with us on the show. We'll be back with more on The Zone after this.